Yes and no. I mean, I believe I always advocate that when people are doing anything they consider uh, activism related, it's usually a good idea to document as much as possible. Um, but it's not necessarily an element. There are days when I'll go out and I, I mean, I may film like the first save I get or something, but after that, I don't really need to make any more video. It's just not interesting. And you can video these saves 30 feet away from Lynn and Jane, can't you? Sure. Um, Robin Hooding also has an aspect of um, trying to engage p the public, other people, in, in discussion and dialogue, correct? I'm not uh, going out there to personally address anyone necessarily, like to, uh, in the sense of like trying to engage them like verbally, but um, I'd say there is the element of since we're outside in public on one of the most public parts of Key in that. Um, there's an element of it, it being like an open invitation for people to come up and talk to me about what I'm doing or maybe like ask questions of the parking enforcer about what's going on. So uh, th there's like, a, I'd say yes, a public outreach element, but I'm not directly making outreach to anyone is what I'm trying to clarify. And in fact, you have engaged in this public outreach with public citizens about your philosophies more than 30 feet away, haven't you? Just to, again, I thought we were dealing with just since October 2015. We are. That's all my, all my questions no, are premised No, your questions on. haven't been limited. You've, you've been asking them generally. I, I, take well, it, I take it when you're asking the questions, you're asking about from October 1st of 2013 to the present. Thank you, sir. Could you repeat the question, please? With that premise. We're, all, we're all only talking about the last two years. <clears throat> but you have engaged in discussions with the public about your philosophies, whatever they may be, um, and you have been able to do that 30 feet away from Lynn and Jane, haven't you? That's, uh, I have a little difficulty answering the question because uh, I'm not really sure how relative location uh, to the parking enforcer has anything to do with like a conversation I may be having with a third party. That's my point. Like, um, like I may be having a conversation with a third clarify. party and I may stop Robin Hooding and they may walk by and that's like, you know, I, I have nothing to do with their location. That's like their, their freedom to walk past where I happen to be standing or whatever. So in other words, you can engage with the public about any of your ideas or philosophies or whatever you want to talk about with public uh, people. Uh, more than 30 feet away from Jane and uh, Linda, can't you? I imagine that the places you could do that are up to infinite amount of feet away from them, sure. And one of your um, goals is really to physically shut down the parking enforcement arm of the government, isn't it? And it has been. Um, well, whether they were to actually shut down or whether they just stopped being so exploitative, and stop charging and taxing people at such, ex, uh, such exponential rates. I mean, because I'd say that's my qualm, is the exponential nature to which people are fined and exploited through that system. Um, so I don't necessarily have the goal of trying to abolish all sorts of parking enforcement. Um, I just uh, have an uh, issue with, and also I feel address the issue by, um, you know, making a difference for people that is just a small amount of money as opposed to a large amount of loss for them. Sir, you've testified <clears throat> that the idea that you can physically shut down the enforcement arm, arm of the government, that's a goal to shoot for. You've said that in the past under oath, haven't you? Yes. Wait, okay. wait, wait, and isn't wait. that, isn't that, doesn't that continue to be? Wait, wait, you're Okay. Can I get the question? The, the, we'll have the question that then, but I think there might be an objection that, that was maybe a little little, little late to the, to the last question. Well, but I'd like to link it to my question. I, the I, question just, here the, I understand. Would you say the question, then, I'll, then we'll have, I'll hear Attorney Meyer on the, the objection. And, and the goal that you've testified to of shutting down the government, that's a goal that you've had since in the last two years, too, isn't it? Okay. Your Honor, I, I am objecting on the grounds, primarily on the grounds of, of relevance, in, in twofold. Primarily, we dealt with the issue of ideology at the last hearing. As I understand it, the purpose of this hearing is not to readdress what the ideology is or whether the ideology is, 
change or not change, but, but to deal with what's actually occurred on the ground, if anything, that would change this court's analysis of the constitutional issues involved in granting an injunction. And I don't see why going back over what their political goals are has any relevance to what's supposed to be going on in this hearing. And in fact, when Attorney Bauer objected to my talking about raising the free teen issue, um, it, it just seemed, you know, for him now to start sort of talking to Garrett about what your political goals are. See, and the secondly, if we were to talk about political goals, I take it that, that Attorney Bauer's point is your stated object, political objective is now is different than it was two years ago. Um, even if that's true, so what? And, and, and I mean, and we're supposed to be dealing with what, what they have, what's going on now, not what he testified to two years ago as were his political goals and doctrines. I, I understand the objection, but for the same reason that I allowed you to ask about, about Free Cain, uh, asking about the political philosophy, uh, I, I, think it's, I think it's, this is cross-examination, credibility of witnesses is an issue. I think this is fair game for cross-examination, the objection's overruled. I would also, frankly, Your Honor, I would ask my brother not to make speaking objections. I, I think that's it. That's, that's a, and I was waiting to see, there's a little bit more into substance than I would like to do in an open court. So if there, is, if there is a speaking objection, I'd like to deal with that at the bench. If it's something more, if it's going to get to the substance of what the witness is talking about, for the same reasons I, I said earlier, I'd, I'd rather deal with that at the bench, out of the, out of the hearing of the, of the witness directly. So Mr. Ian, your goals are the same in the last two years today. And they'll be the same tomorrow, won't they? To shut down the government and particularly shut down the park enforcement arm of the, uh, of the PEOs. Uh, that hasn't changed, has it? Well, I feel like I need to go through each of those points to say like which would be most effective in which order, whether like shutting down parking enforcement before the government. Let me make but it simple. Your goals haven't changed in the last two years, have they? I don't believe my philosophy has changed much fundamentally now. Not that I've noticed, not that others have addressed to me. And your goal has been and is today to prevent the issuance of tickets, correct? Uh, yes, that's one of the goals. Well, some of the tickets. I mean, some of them I don't really care if they issue if, if someone's actually obstructing traffic or something like that. I mean, I think there's probably better ways of solving it than tickets, but um, I want to stop them from being able to uh, get tickets if I can if I can do so if I can if I can fill those meters and spend a small amount of money to prevent someone else from having to spend a large amount um, I'd like to help people like that and if that means interfering with Jane and Lynn doing their jobs that's part of your goal isn't it to prevent them from issuing those tickets oh I don't want to interfere with anyone um, so I'm not interfering with them in any way in the sense of they have personal space that I respect um, if they make a legitimate respect about my space I would honor it but as I've mentioned there has been no uh, there's been no addressing of any sort of issue with me being too close to them in the time frame that is that addressed. too close that photograph of in the videotape from your perspective from my understanding of the camera that Ian was using I believe it was the same one that he's using today um, I would estimate he's probably about 10 feet away from her in that in that photo, and you could also get a judge by how, when you see people cross by them, that the, they're probably about equidistant between the two people they're running past. Um, so, no, I don't believe that Ian was necessarily violating her personal space. I mean, I may not agree with the content or, like, uh, the necessarily language of how he was delivering it and, like, the timing or necessarily, but I don't think proximity-wise that he's in any way, like, offending her. You don't think, having seen this, fo these vid this video, in this photograph, which for the record is at one minute and one second, you don't think that that's offensive to, uh, to Lynn? He's not violating any of her rights, from my understanding. I mean, she may find it offensive. That's, uh, that, that's a subjective call. I feel like I'd be speculating as to how she should respond to something. Um, You don't think that's bothersome from your point of view? If you were out on the street yesterday or tomorrow and the conduct that you saw in this video 
and this still at one minute and one second, you don't think that's bothersome to Lynn or Jane? Well, if you're asking about the still, I find nothing offensive about the still. Um, I suppose if you're saying bothersome, that maybe the idea that they were both talking each over, over each other at the same time is like not effective way to converse. Um, but you know, that's whether or not I'd say that's offensive necessarily. That's a subjective thing for the people in that that certain instance, I guess, to interpret. You wouldn't do it, would you? That's not me in the video. I wasn't there that day, so. You wouldn't do it, would you? I wouldn't do what specifically? You wouldn't do what that video and that still depicts to Jane and Linda, would you? Um, I, I mean, I guess I could. <laughs> That's a yes or a no. It's like asking me if I've ever like talked over someone or, you know, it, no, yes I, 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 no, I don't want to talk over people, so. I try not to. Well, you answer the question, the yeah, direct he, question, wait, yes no, or no. He, wait, yeah, objection. He has answered the question, and you cannot, there's no possible grounds for limiting to yes or no answers, particularly on this question. You can answer that I, question, I yes or no. I, overall, you don't have to answer yes or no. I don't think it necessarily calls for a yes or no answer only. If you want to, if you want to explain your answer, you can certainly do that. Um, well, I've observed Linda behaving in a manner similar to as Ian observed in this video, and I've recorded it, and I've had less dialogue with her. Um, I think there have been other times where she's done a similar moving back and forth, only it's been from across the street, meaning that I am, I don't know how long it is across the two lanes of traffic, but it may be 30 feet, and uh, she'll she will be moving back and forth based on like my movements if i'm trying to get in front of her so i basically can never get in front of her she's always behind her if she's turning um but yeah I, I mean if you're asking if i've had the same interaction as ian had no like he's his own person like if you know I, because i wouldn't have talked over someone or try not to talk over people like there may be talking over people in this video but i don't know i hope that answers the question and you have it in fact Videotaped within five or five feet or so. Five feet. Um, if I was within five feet of them, I was probably within the time frame we're speaking of. Um, there may have been an, a uh, a place where, like, I crossed them on the sidewalk while I had a video camera rolling, and in that sense, I would have been five feet for like a short period of time. But for the most part, no, I would not be maintaining five feet of space between them and videotaping because as I said since the last trial they made it pretty clear they like don't want to be near us so I respect that and I'm not within that close proximity of five feet. Didn't they make that clear to you before the last trial when they would tell you to get back give me back off Garrett? They told you that before the trial too didn't they? But, it, but you didn't do that it was only after the trial. Yeah, yeah, that's a, a compound question, objection. Sustained. They told you to back off more than five feet before the last trial, didn't they? Just answer that yes or no, and we'll take the next piece. Well, I'd have to directly refer to my testimony two years ago in which I stated there was one instance where Lynn told me that she wanted extra space, and I wasn't even within five feet of her at that time. And then there was another time where Jane asked for 15 feet seemingly under the direction of Peter Thomas. Let me show you uh, your testimony, page 427, line five. I said, how close were you when you took photograph number one? And what did you tell the court under oath? Um, five to eight feet. Could you, do you have photograph number one? Maybe we could pull it up. You said, quote, I would estimate between five and eight feet, didn't you? Mm-hmm. No, I don't remember what photograph number one was, but it may have been while I was crossing her and crossing paths with her or something. But again, this is referring to something that was older as well, uh, prior to the dates that were specified at the beginning of the testimony. And um, with regard to crossing the street, you said that uh, you might have to be within five feet of Jane and Linda crossing the street. Well, you can wait until they cross the street, or you can go across the street before them in order to avo uh, avoid that 10 feet distance, or even that 15 feet distance, can't you? Well, the thing about crossing the street is, is that there's traffic, 
and you have to wait until the traffic stops and then pedestrians are allotted time to cross. Mm -hmm. So like, generally like, there will be an accumulation of people at a street corner. Not being given an opportunity to finish his answer. I think, would you, and, and this, this happens all the time, and I take it that Attorney Bauer in part didn't feel like he was getting a, an answer to his question, so that's why I jumped in, but let's, if, if you want further clarification, we can, we can do that, but why don't uh, you finish your answer and then Attorney Bauer will pose the next question. Okay, so no, you can't just cross uh, the street whenever you wish to because traffic will strike you. And so people will generally have to wait and there's an area in the sidewalk in which you'd be off to the side so you're not obstructing people wanting to walk by. Um, and if the parking enforcer and myself wish to cross the same street, I won't be standing right next to them. I'll give them the breadth of, of that area I'm describing if they wish to have it, and they'd take it, usually. Or they walk a different way. As we sit here today, having been through three days of trial and the Supreme Court and another trial day, are you willing to stay back 10 or 15 feet from Lynn and, J and Jane? My understanding is that Lynn and Jane have not raised a proximity issue uh, concerning myself in the time frame we're describing, so it hasn't been an issue and I don't see why it would continue to be an issue that there would be some sort of obstruction of their personal space. So you are not willing to do that voluntarily, correct? I'm not going to voluntarily ban myself from a certain space of someone whom I do wish to like walk past, uh, you know, given all respect to their space on the sidewalk, um, given the activity they're doing. So no, I'm not going to voluntarily decide that I'm not going to be within X amount of feet of someone that's kind of strange. Everyone, I believe in equality, like everyone has the same rights, like everyone has the same personal space rights. Thank you. Further direct examination? Um. Garrett, I had asked you about 10 feet distance, and Attorney Bauer sort of upped the ante and started asking about 30 feet. If you had to stay 30 feet away from the parking enforcement officers at all times, how would that affect your ability to engage in Robin Hood activity? Well, there are the reason I say that it's necessary to come within a few feet of them at some times is because if you don't, that would mean you're trying to pass around buildings, going around entire blocks. Um, you're, you're basically going to lose sight of them um, if you were to choose to go an alternate route in lieu of crossing within five to ten feet of someone on a sidewalk at a given time. Um, so being 30 feet away would mean all it takes um, is for them to change direction and effectively you'd have to run around an entire city block in order to get back ahead of them, which is pretty ineffective. They're, they're, they can walk that amount of space before you could even run that amount of space, and I really don't want to be having to like run around in different areas to try and be ahead of someone a certain amount of space. That's what I consider to be somewhat unreasonable. It's quite a long distance, 30 feet. Um, now, I, I have no further questions. Thank you. Any further uh, cross-examination? No, okay. You may step down, Mr. Ian. Your Honor, um, defendants call us your next witness, Ian Freeman. Ian, you do want to bring your laptop up just so if you're asked any questions about the videotape, you can, it's okay with the court. I think part of you is the number there. Okay, can you play in the courtroom or not? Uh, it would probably be easier to just use there since they've got okay. Okay. I think we don't want to break down the setup. Right. Yeah. It would be all right to just hit the but, play but, but, No, just for your, your sake, not for the court's sake, just for your sake. If some question comes up, we need to look at it. Okay. <laughs> Uh, let me say one of the way if the if the question is that if there's a portion that people want to see we could always have counsel come up and and I think we've done this in, in the past Mr. Freeman could just play whatever uh, it needs and, and we could we could do it uh, with, with counsel and I could and I could see it at right. the same time. Right. 
Now, Ian, let me, I'm sorry, first let me swear you in. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm, tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I affirm, I tell the truth. Thank you. Please you may be seated. And please state for the record your full name and current address. I'm Ian Freeman, and my address is 73 Leverett Street in Keene. Yes. All right, l let me start with uh, Free State, since uh, some of the responsibility for that organization has been attributable to you. Now, is, is organization. You say Free State or Free Keene, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Free Keene. Has, um, is organization a correct term to use to describe Free Keen? Not really. It's a blog, sort of in the same way that, uh, you know, that like a newspaper.